maybe I can say, well, Clara, I met you back when we had the first Kilkenny Animated Festival. Is that right? It was actually like an open, oh, an open day, open studio day. Yeah, something open like day. that. Yes. And I remember <laughs> I was in the back of Billy Burns and Ross came up yeah. to me and showed me your portfolio. And it was exactly what we were talking about for Wolfwalkers in terms of the yeah. block printing style that you did. It mm -hmm. really stood out. And you'd made a kind of a, a picture book, like you'd made a, a small promotional picture book of your work that was in block printing style. Yeah. Or was it just your portfolio? Okay. Also? Yeah, I think I think I saw you all my portfolio on an iPad, which is something I normally don't do, but uh, oh, I normally carry a large uh, uh, a large folder with my art like original yeah. to show it because it always looks a little bit better if you do original art to show the original yeah. pieces right yeah. but yeah remember of course i was not gonna take that to the pub <laughs> uh, that's what it was so, it was an ipad or something yeah. i remember ross saying you have to see this girl's work though so, so yeah or yeah i remember i was so surprised <laughs> yeah for the audience me and uh, myself and Ross Stewart um, co-directed Wolfwalkers and uh, I'm a co-founder of Cartoon Saloon and at the time Ross and I were developing Wolfwalkers we discovered that uh, well Ross always had an interest in print and we discovered that there had been a lot of these kind of woodblock printed pamphlets made during the time period that the movie was set in so we wanted to include block prints in the style of the movie and so that's why your portfolio was so exciting uh, for us. Yeah, yeah. I remember it was so surprised. I remember it being so surprising for me that uh, some animation <laughs> they were interested in animation in 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 this kind of uh, line of code block print yeah. uh, art for an animation yeah. movie is not something that you see yeah. every day, right? I was really it, like, wow. It, I it's nice. <laughs> I think the big thing for us and I with Wolfwalkers was we wanted to make something kind of timeless something that felt more mm -hmm. aligned with handmade stuff than digital yeah. stuff so that was one of the things and it was appropriate to the time period and then it became yeah. a big part of the visual language of course it, it meant that everything that was in the block print style was to do with the town so you kind of ended up becoming the specialist of Kilkenny <laughs> even though you're not from <laughs> Kilkenny <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I remember uh, like uh, Rose always talk about how the all the people from Spain we were giving too much color. <laughs> yeah, making it too bright. So <laughs> the background, but yeah, uh, see, yeah, that's exactly what I actually wanted to talk about. Like the fact that um, yeah, this kind of method, like uh, it back then was made in wood. Now there's still people who do it in wood. You can also do it in lino, which is a little bit easier to handle. That's what I normally will use. And yeah, it, it made a lot of sense, right? Because um, mm. I think it was the, they were starting to print books with the first printers and like the first um, this kind of uh, letters yeah. that yeah. Books that they could I, use for yeah. for writing, and then they could illustrate the books with uh, this kind of um, of of technique. No, so it it yeah. did made a lot of sense and had to do been, something like that. Had it been a part of your art practice forever, or when did you start doing block prints? Um. Okay, so I remember doing it for the first time when I was studying fine arts, uh -huh. but back then, you know, life was messy. Like I remember, we were having, we were learning so many techniques at the same time. There was never really time to develop anything. So I remember uh, doing it for the first time and feeling very curious about it. And then some years later, when I was studying in Cambridge, uh, some illustration masters. Um, they had a very good printmaking studio back in mm. back in my school in Cambridge. It was just a place where you wanted to spend all the time. There were so many presses, so many techniques you could do, and it was like just yes, spending hours there, hours and hours. I remember just having a sandwich and then keep printing. <laughs> and That's it, how it I felt very... like the, the background department. I used to like going into the background department because it was so mellow and everyone was working. On oh paper, yeah, that pens. was true. Yeah, yeah, I had that feeling. So. <laughs> Yeah, also like, yeah, it was a very similar feeling, also like a low floor kind of place where nobody walks in. And then we had like a very small group of people working on the line background department, right? Yes. Yeah, the line background part. Yeah, the color part was different. Yeah, so the line part uh, starts to fade <laughs> yeah. into my memory. But I remember it felt pretty chill. It felt like the kind of vibe that we wanted where everything was kind of handmade. So you'd been doing mm -hmm. it since you did your, you did your master's in illustration in Cambridge, is that right? Yes. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember um, I like printmaking in general, but I especially like line of code slash block mm -hmm. cut kind of uh, printmaking because I think what I really love about it is that it has a very unique look. Mm -hmm. Like uh, there is nothing like look like that, right? Because you are using the cutting tools to remove um, everything that you want to be white and leave whatever is black. So you get like very chunky, very weird lines yeah. that uh, they look in a very specific, special way that I was like, uh, yeah, there is nothing that can actually imitate this. Uh, actually, when I started working on both workers, um, Ross told me this technique, right? Like mm. doing this Drawing negative drop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, making it in reverse. And you can actually get a result that was very similar to line of code. And I remember being so surprised by it because I thought, I thought there was no way to imitate well, the line I, of code, actually. Ross is very clever with that because as well, it, it preserves the it preserves the mistakes that make it so special because yeah. it's never the same twice. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we worked really hard to keep, even though it was colored digitally, was this effect that sometimes when you put a second uh, roller down, like when you put a second color down, it's a little bit offset. Like it's a bit, it doesn't yeah. quite fit exactly. And we played with that a lot with the characters and stuff to try and keep that feeling yeah. of a, a block print, even for the characters, even though they were colored. Yeah, digitally. I think. Yeah, I think uh, you did a very good work with the ink and paint team and the, and the cleanup team too, to really yeah, get the, the characters to look like they were part of the mm -hmm. of these backgrounds. I was so surprised, right? Because it's just such a very different style that you have to build also, like yeah. kind of an aesthetic for the characters too. And, yeah. and also how, how it really works so well with the, with the forest. Mm. backgrounds that are so extremely different but uh, it eventually fit together so well yeah <laughs> yeah it, it came together it was kind of part of the excitement of uh, mm -hmm. setting the movie in that time period we were excited to also try different techniques from that time period or at least to represent a, a simulacrum of yeah. what it looked like yeah. yeah i remember as well that there was a lot of questions about could we really join up the two styles? And we had this kind of intermediate world between the town and the forest where the block print style is just applied to the, you know, the farm buildings. And yeah. as it becomes the forest, it becomes more watercolor. And yeah, and I think with Maria Preya's kind of a very loose approach to the yeah. watercolor in the forest, it felt a little bit like mm -hmm. The block prints because the colors went outside the line sometimes so. yeah also also then the color was made in watercolors and yeah. then but the pencil line was done separately so that way you also get that offset feeling that it's offset. yeah it's so I think those imperfections are what's so special about hand-drawn animation yeah. i think it's yeah, nice exactly. to offer something it's kind of timeless i mean block printing's been around forever and to kind of have mm -hmm. a look like that as part of the visual language kind of makes me feel like the movie will last a long time and that advances in software and stuff won't have an, an impact yeah. on how it is perceived by the audience. It'll have a timelessness, I hope, you know. Yeah, I think so too, right? Because we're we you were not we were not really experimenting with the latest techniques, exactly. but it was more like trying how can we keep pushing these traditional techniques or things that have already been done before, but mixing them together to get a different result. So it's it, it it is very interesting, right? And I and yeah. I think it's for me. Uh, I I really I was really happy when I started working on the movie because I really felt that uh, in the movie there were a lot of challenges, a lo lot of artistic challenges that I have in my personal artistic life too. Let's say so. For example, one of them is how to keep the um, an spontaneous drawing or an spontaneous uh, traditional art with its mistakes and being able to preserve them in the final piece and make it still look good. So it was uh, very good that the, this movie was exactly about it, right? Yeah, you were perfect um, for the movie at the time. I mean, you're a great artist <laughs> in general, but considering your personal art practice overlapped so much with what we were trying to do. And then what was so lovely yeah. for me was you gave me and Ross a gift of a of a print of Wolfwalkers that you made. And oh, that's yeah. when we got the idea, <laughs> well, we should we should ask her to make some yeah. more prints so we can sell them in the shop. <laughs> yes. And, and then you went and did one for Song of the Sea and you did one for Secret of Kells. So what was your yeah. thought process for each of those prints? What were you thinking about? Yeah. So actually, I think uh, the, the the first print that was made, exactly, that's the one uh, you're talking about. Uh, I, I don't know, for for some reason, at some point, I kind of visualized like how would it be like a poster of the movie if it was made uh, fully in line, right? And mm -hmm. it kind of started like, 
you know, I think sometimes uh, as an artist, you suddenly get a very clear idea of something. Like you visualize it in your head for some reason. You're like, okay, I, I know exactly how to do it. I, I wish it happened more often because it doesn't always happen. But yeah, I suddenly have that image in my head and I was like, okay, I'm going to try to do it. And yeah, then send, make a few copies, send them to friends and stuff. I think I gave another one to Maria. Yeah. Uh, to Maria Pareja. Um, I'm yeah, it was... in my room, yeah, in my home office. I have the what the original one you gave me framed, yeah. Yeah, that I was actually printed at home, right? Like, because <laughs> no, it was still it's... pandemic, and I remember the the only printmaking studio in Kilkenny sadly closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made, the uh, black access side, yeah. to yeah, I didn't really get access to any press, so I would use that this Japanese paper that is super thin, so you can actually print it at home with a wooden spoon oh, or something like that. So it's a, it's a little bit more imperfect, right? Like it's hard to get all the details clean and stuff, but it was also, it's also exciting, right? Like it was just handmade. Where do you, where do you print, print the ones for the saloon shop? Cause it's amazing that each one is handmade by you. I think that's really special that each um, one is unique, you know? Yeah, I think, I think it's the special part of this, right? Like even though it's a series and of course um, there's a repetition of an image, each one of them is handmade. So I did like the whole process, like even cutting the paper, I will cut it with, a, <laughs> I got this uh, ruler with a kind of a funky shape. Oh, so I actually get, it's, it's not like a super clean cut. It's actually like a, with with the edges. Um, yeah, so it's, okay. yeah, so like in the paper, cutting it. I actually went to these, um, there is this printmaking studio here in Madrid. It's called El Mono de la Tinta or something like that. Mm. So there's these two ladies who who are very good at printmaking and they actually do a lot of uh, personal graphic work and they also print, like some publishers, they want to make like hand-printed books. Yeah. So they normally do these kind of jobs. And they also have like open studio. So you can go like once a week and they will give you a hand. So that was very useful too because they actually helped me to make the best quality possible. Mm. Right, because um, I, I mean, I've done a lot of printmaking, but it's actually like a very, it's a process that requires a lot of organization, right? Like oh, you have crap. to use the right yeah. ink. Um, sometimes if the ink is a bit too dry, you have to make sure that you uh, put something on it to make it a little bit more liquid. You have to, you have to put the right exact amount. If you put too mm. much, uh, the ink is going to get inside the holes mm. and you're mm. going to get ink mm. because you don't want it. Sure. If you don't put enough, it is not going to look clear. Mm. So um, it was very good also to, so I was doing the prints my own, but they were around. So they, <laughs> it's very funny because always like the people who work in printmaking studios, they're kind of scary. <laughs> 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 they're always looking at you like, what are you doing there? <laughs> You're like, yeah. okay, sorry. <laughs> you feel I'm like, yeah. I want you to explain me how to do it, but at the same time, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's also it's also beautiful. Like you also, go there, you hang out really with other strong, artists, right? From all that printing, it probably makes them really. <laughs> <possible>. <laughs> yeah, but I have to say, like when you print at home, you actually have to do a lot of strength with your arm. But uh, with the presses, they are the uh, ones who do the extremely yeah, uh, it, it heavy but yeah, still, it feels kind of physical work. I remember sometimes like feeling sick and going to the studio. It's like have to go up, down. Oh, these. yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. Of and course, so, say... whenever we asked Sorry. you to make the prints for Song of the Sea and Secret of Kells, because you didn't work on those movies, you were probably a kid when we worked <laughs> on those movies. How did, you go about, how did you go about researching and designing those prints? Okay, so yeah, of course, of what walkers, I kind of knew the movie. Uh, it, it's kind of actually a funny thing about the Wolf Walkers one, if I can make a little parenthesis. I remember the movie didn't come out yet when when I was doing this print, and I didn't really have access anymore to the files of the movie. So I actually was kind of drawing from memory, and sometimes <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, how was this ex character exactly I'm trying to find? Like, I remember That's the, also what the, I like about it, yeah. It's like your version really of the characters. I like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but then with uh, both Secret of Kells and Song of the Sea, I, of course, I rewatched the movie. I remember feeling very excited doing the Song of the Sea one mm -hmm. because uh, I think that's the first movie I actually watched from 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 Cartoon mm -hmm. Saloon. So when it came out, I watched it and then I yeah. I kind of fell in love with the, <laughs> with the oh, thing. Nice. So, 
Yeah. So watching that again, um, it was also very emotional, right? Like thinking, mm-hmm. like, oh, now I'm working in these prints uh, inspired on that movie that I was uh, a big fan of when I was uh, a student, right? <laughs> so that was very cute. And um, yeah, so basically try to incorporate elements. I also try to make a composition that will make sense if somebody buy the three prints, you can put one next to each other and it's a like one of like I think the wolf walkers goes like this, mm-hmm. then the song of this is kind of symmetrical with a circle, and then the chaos goes like this. Mm-hmm. So that way the three it's prints together. look good together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So try to introduce uh, as many elements as possible. Of course, it's not it's not always possible, and again, you have to prioritize a good aesthetic over trying to put everything in there. But uh, but it was fun to think about. Oh, I love this part of the movie. I'm gonna try to introduce this character somewhere else. And, and things like that, right? And then I also thought about the idea of um, making it a bit different. So it was um, when I came out with the idea of, uh, especially for Song of the Sea, using black paper with white ink on top, <laughs> which was also, it was very cool because it was also a challenge. And I normally like to have a little bit of a challenge in everything I do, because I think it's the, to have a little bit of exploration in there, it's what sure. actually makes it, yeah kind of exciting, you right? Like, you can feel it when someone's doing something that they've done over and over again. I used to do a lot mm-hmm. of watercolors for fans. And after a while, when I was kind of bored, I could tell you could yeah. see it in the work. You know, even if I was getting more expert at doing the same drawing over and over yeah. again, it's it's nice to challenge yourself. And yeah. 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 Actually, it's something I reflect a lot about, right? Because when you are learning something, you are dealing sometimes with the frustration that you cannot get the kind of things you want to do just yet. Mm-hmm. So just like, I can't wait to be good enough to to do these drawings properly or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when you actually good enough, uh, you can deliver good results, but maybe you don't have that same level of excitement. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of something that I like about exploring, right? And that's something very interesting about trying different, especially traditional techniques. They have so many tiny rules that you have to learn. So it keeps you always awake, right? Like, yeah. don't mess it up, <laughs> right? The craft yeah. aspect of of watercolor or printmaking or anything that's like really dealing with natural media and natural materials, um, it means that you nearly need to do everything at least twice because you make so many mistakes the first time. And then you, mm-hmm. kind, of, you kind of perfect it. And then there's this kind of sweet spot when you're really good at it. But then it gets boring and you have to challenge yourself again, you know? <laughs> yes, exactly. So this was a, a lot of a challenge, actually, because, yeah, um, yeah so, so I think uh, one of the challenging part, challenging part of printmaking is actually dealing with the inks, how they're going to look on different papers, the, the papers, if it's too much texture, mm. the pressure of the press you use. Like, there's so many things mm. that so are part factors. of the process. Yeah that can actually give you a very good result or a very bad result or maybe a very unexpected result that you were not planning, but maybe it's better or maybe it's something that you can use in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I also had to do some tests to see if the ink was looking good on the paper. Actually, on on the very first place, I wanted to do dark blue, but uh, it was very hard to find the blue paper that was suitable for printmaking. It also gets very challenging to find the materials, right? Because there's... Of course, there is tons of white paper you can find for pre-making, but when you start trying, oh, what if I work on a color paper? It gets more challenging, right? Like, mm. I think there were literally two brands that will make black paper for pre-making. Oh, wow. And then other colors were completely impossible to find. Maybe you will find different state of white, beige, gray, but uh, mm. outside yeah, that range, color. it's very hard to find. So, yeah, yeah. it's also fun, but you have to play with creativity and, yeah. yeah. But the Secret <laughs> of Kells print, that was back to white with black ink on top. That was white paper. With yeah. Black ink. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Secret uh, Secret of Kill was actually like um, like a ochre beige kind of color. Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. so it's, um, it it's more, more like of a natural. Vellum. Yeah, it feels a bit more like vellum. Yeah. Because that suits the manuscript yeah. kind of. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought it cool. was a bit yeah, topic well on right. that. And then the ink is uh, green. It also mm. make a lot of sense with the colors yeah. of the movie. So it yeah. is very dark. So yeah, I, th- I yeah, think if you like... take a picture of it, 
it might look like black and white, but if no. you look at it in person, yeah, yeah, you there's can more detail to it. So I think it's nice as well that you reflect, even in a very limited way, the color scheme of the movie. Mm -hmm. That's good, I think. Yeah. But I think ultimately you've made me realize that I need to get the Secret of Kells one and the Song of the Sea one as well and put it beside my <laughs> Wolfwalkers one so that because I think they fit together like <laughs> yeah people watching this really would be advised to buy all three prints and not just <laughs> <laughs> They fit well, well but uh, I think most of them are so loud, actually. Yeah, so yeah. good luck. Which is great. The second, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the second run through the market. But yeah, hopefully we'll do, <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully we'll do more stuff like that. And do you have any other projects at the moment that involve printmaking that you're working on? Yeah, actually, like um, right now, I'm very focused on the comic I'm working on, mm. which is hopefully be finished uh, by summer or so. Awesome. So hopefully coming out by the end of this year. So but uh, yeah, it's so much work to make a comic. It's so much. I'm also doing it with watercolors, pencils. But yeah, it's 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 funny. It took me a while to get a good rhythm to it, but now it's going better. Like I'm managing to do the this amount of work every week. So it's actually it's like an animation movie, really. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's the just you. That you're on your own. Yeah, it's just <laughs> you. It's hard, hard work. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. I remember yeah, talking yeah, to one of my. Of at the beginning, it, uh, like the rhythm is uh, it's kind of chaotic. Like sometimes you do so much, sometimes you do so little, and then you finally, yeah, I'm about to get to the end. Like the, no, sorry, to halfway through the whole process. So, so yeah, right now I'm I'm getting a good rhythm. Like I, I yeah. put myself goals that I can reach, so it's going well. And what about and music? Then, do you still play music? Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was um actually when I came here I started playing some jazz. Oh cool. Uh, like, yeah, I joined like um learning a jazz band, but uh, at some point I have to give it up because it was a lot of time and yeah. yeah, actually right now I'm so focused on the comic that I'm not really making a lot of music. Yeah, that's the curse of being multi-talented. See, thankfully I can't do much, so I can only do what I do, but you have to choose between yeah. your balance. That's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also fun. <laughs> but yeah, I think at this point I'm like I like to make the joke like um I have a level of creative juices, right? <laughs> and you also have to enjoy yourself and have fun to refill that bottle yeah, of juice. Yeah. <laughs> and one can feed the other, I guess. Like I find my sketchbooks and my life drawing are oh. feeding animation and vice versa. It's interesting how one one part of your artistic practice can inform other parts. But just like yeah. how your print making became a big part of yeah. why we picked you to work on Wolfwalker. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's um making I also love sketchbooks. I've been yeah. traveling a lot this last year too and a lot of uh, natural drawing while traveling. That that's Absolutely. that's what I'm enjoying the most right now. But yeah. yeah, definitely for me if I'm if I'm working on watercolors or on the computer or whatever art technique for most of the day, I probably not going to have the energy to keep doing something very similar after work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure, uh, it's good that pre-making, for example, is so very different. Yeah. That it, it, it's also good. It makes me go outside. Uh -huh, <laughs> and get away from the screen and, and do people. something that gets your hands dirty. And yeah, it's really yeah, good. Exactly. It's tactile, see it's see other artists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's very refreshing. That's why um, So I've been talking with a uh, with a cartoon salon store and uh, with you too about making a new piece inspired on wolf walkers yeah awesome. so yeah. yeah that's gonna be exciting yeah. i think people yeah, are, actually, i think people are eager for that because i think the movie <laughs> of you making the prints and all really inspires people because i think a big part of what's special about this trilogy is that there's a real celebration of how handmade it is and so i think there's a hunger now for people in the face of ai in the face of so much computer stuff oh, yeah. to see really handmade art and to know the artist that's making it has touched this piece that you're buying i think it's really special yeah yeah i i really like it too like for example, I love working in watercolors, but of course, if you want to make a, you can either sell an original piece or you mm. have to digitalize it and then print it to yeah. make copies of it, which, which you can, it's also great, right? But, but it's, I think it's so beautiful to work from, from the beginning with the piece of lino, carve the whole thing, put the ink, put the paper. It's like the whole process is so fully handmade, right? 
and then you make your copies. Yes, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like a witch when I work on it. I really love <laughs> that feeling. <laughs> Optimist then feeling. Yeah. And what, yeah, what do you have in mind print. for your what do you have in mind for your new prints, Clara? What what are you planning? Yeah, so uh, talking about challenges, I always mm. been. Uh, uh, it's been a while that I've been thinking about the idea of making a bigger piece in Linocut. I think uh, the biggest I have, I think there's one over here, but it's maybe around this size mm. or yeah, mm -hmm. an AC paper kind of size, approximately, maybe a little bit bigger. But uh, I was really wanting to make something bigger for a while. So, That's yeah, scary. I remember um, I actually came up with this idea kind of at the same time that I was working on this. But what, something that inspired me a lot was the idea that uh, in the same way that uh, when you were working on, on the movie and the aesthetic of the movie, you thought about um, this uh, medieval, well, not medieval, but like 15th century mm -hmm, block mm -hmm, print mm -hmm. inspiration. It also fits the date of, mm -hmm. the, of the actual movie, right? So I was just looking at some of the inspirations we have for the movie, actually, and some of the old uh, printmakings, and there is a lot of uh, maps of cities. Oh yeah, and exactly. Really, we were yeah. going to use those originally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I and I really like the look of those maps. It's something yeah. that it was really, we tried to emulate also in the in the yeah. in the movie, right? Because it kind of says something like, about the conquering. You know, they put a name on it and put a box around mm -hmm. it. It's like a kind of yeah. Yeah. You look at the, all the tiny houses, and some yeah. are very similar, some are different. Yeah. It's so exciting to look at, and also I think it was a big inspiration because also those uh, those prints they play a lot with uh, perspective, right? Yeah, and yeah. they play a lot with um, with weird things happening, yeah. which is something that I think you you got as an inspiration also in Secret of Chaos, right? Yeah, and it kind of became a little bit of a trademark of this yeah. trilogy yeah playing, playing with, with that perspective. perspective and stuff so oh i'm excited to see what you're cooking up yeah. <laughs> so yeah the um the idea that i came out with also living in kilkenny was like creating a a map of kilkenny actually nice. uh, uh, not so much like like uh I, I like in the movie everything was so squared right yeah so when you look at the city from the outside it was like an yeah, actual square yeah. the triangles but I kind of wanted to give you like a different point of view and make it more like one of these maps that are not yeah. very precise, but it's still kind of you can feel and, yeah. the sense of the city. So I was kind of excited also living in Kilkenny to be like, oh, maybe I can throw this tiny street that goes over here and this corridor and this. Yeah. So um, introducing some of the actual churches and houses that were already in Kilkenny back when the movie happened. So the idea is to, um, yeah, I think a lot of these um, medieval prints uh, of cities, they normally are showing like a battle or like an historical mm -hmm. moment that happened. Mm -hmm. So my, my whole idea was to work as if I was uh, an artist living in Kilkenny back when the movie happened. And they were like, well, you know, this thing happened. Like they had this oh, huge so wall in the plaza so and then uh, they both ran away with this girl riding on top. And then there was the, awesome. this huge... Uh, awesome epic moment so the idea is kind of like doing something like that right like oh. if an artist was living there and they will make a print inspired on what happened it will be something like oh, this so cool <laughs> this is so much the stuff that i'm so happy that we're doing in the studio now because i always <laughs> feel like there's so many more things we can do around the movie that are inspired by the movie and to see different artists like yourself take your interpretation and be inspired by the movie as a starting point i think it's really really cool so i'm really excited for that yeah and i think uh you just say that uh you're happy to see artists um kind of like feel inspired about what we do in the movie and stuff yeah, yeah for me it was a very good experience working on wolf walkers really because i'm i really felt it like uh like a personal project somehow like of course it was yeah. a it's a collective project we and wanted it was everyone like, to feel like that was also their yeah. movie that they were co-filmmakers and that's why yeah. even for ink and paint or departments that sometimes can become a little bit mechanical we wanted everyone to be able to think like a, a creative person but certainly the scene illustrations you made and the backgrounds that you made were i felt like you put a lot of yourself into it which was great yeah, yeah, I really felt like I was yeah enjoying it as much as I do enjoy my personal project. So Good. yeah, that's that's why I keep 
feeling very happy to do things that are related with the movie. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to come up with another movie that needs woodblock print style soon so that we can have more fun. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> just try your things. I'll keep in <laughs> the excitement. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's nice to chat to you again, Clara. I haven't spoken to you in so yeah, long. Yeah, so it was it's very been, good to see you, Alika. Yeah, it's been a while. Remember, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, I've been spending a lot of time <laughs> painting. I've been, well, I've been, I started learning oil painting and I worked hard at it for three or four months. And then since I came back in the studio, I haven't done so much. But I want to do more and more oil painting and drawing and stuff. Because after Wolfwalkers, I was kind of burnt out and it was nice to kind of recuperate by by drawing a lot yeah. and now i want to yeah kind of, yeah i always used to say that if i wasn't an animator i'd be a, a tattoo artist or something just so i could draw all day or like i want to yeah. try and create a space for myself for the next movie that i get to be a part of that zen room of drawing and not spend all yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, what if I guess? Yeah. yeah but it's just a pleasure mm. to be able put together such a talented team and to be able to continue the collaboration so long after the movie so thank you Clara. yeah that's so great yeah so you've been uh refilling your creative juice bottle I right sure right? have i sure have and now i'm back and i have to yeah. focus but i'm also really yeah. excited about all this stuff like i'm really happy that the studio is doing all this stuff because it's the kind of thing that i love as a fan like i always love limited edition prints and books and mm -hmm. art books and behind the scenes and even this conversation with you is the kind of stuff i'm always interested by so i'm really excited about that side of the studio too so yes yeah 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 yeah, yes. and I think yeah, I think it also fits well with the whole philosophy of the studio, right? Like yeah. it's a smaller studio and like doing all of these handmade things. So it made a lot of sense to to create yeah. these kind of little projects. Little projects. <laughs> and I hope you're gonna put me on the mailing list for the first copies of your comic when it's finished. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I should have made a mailing sure? list. Oh my yeah, god. Well, let me it's so hard. <laughs> let me pre-order. I'm pre-ordering it now. Okay, yeah. okay. Make sure <laughs> it's to the first it's going to be in Spanish, but yeah, hopefully okay. we'll be trying I can I can handle it. I might use this amazing like technology can be good for some things. You can use your phone to oh. automatically. I do that with some French bon Dizine, I must admit, even though I'm supposed oh, yeah. to be learning French. Sometimes it's easier to read it with the Google Translate. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well that's a that's a good trick. I'm gonna start doing it too. <laughs> Because I definitely buy a lot of French books, like yeah, over French comic books. Yeah, my yeah. ability to look at French, yeah. <laughs> it's not really. Well, I hope when, whenever you have some time, we'll see you in Kilkenny again for. A yeah, little like I, nice. yeah, left left almost two years ago. I know, and I'm always like, well, when it's time to go back. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's just for a visit, it would be lovely to see you. Again. Yeah, exactly. I feel like yeah, leaving Ireland during COVID. Left me with the feeling that there were so many things I wanted to do in Ireland that I didn't get to do places to visit. So, yeah, I'm really like kind of excited to go back. Come back for the animation festival. Well, uh, yeah, when is gonna be? <laughs> in October. So, yeah. In October. Okay, yeah. okay. Maybe we can good. find a way to bring you over for that. <laughs> it will be amazing. What? Maybe we can <laughs> find a way to invite you over for that, and you can do a workshop or something about your prints. Oh, that'd that would be amazing. Be awesome. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think that would we be can cool. do some little line of with a uh, rubber or things like that yeah like tiny yeah <laughs> i think people love workshops and stuff so we should definitely do that oh yes i like that i like that idea <laughs> all right Clara. I, I think we'll leave it there but um thank you yeah. thank you so much thank you very much it was really to good soon. to see you Tom. yeah good to see you talk to you soon bye-bye okay see you <laughs>